Help bring these Antifa criminals to justice. Your help is needed. We are trying to identify the individuals involved in this attack on independent journalist Keith of Patriot Warrior Media in Berkeley on August 27, 2017. If you are not already familiar with the context and details of this attack, see the links in the description below under the heading, Videos of and about the attack on Keith August 27th. For the time being, here is the attack from multiple angles. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank Very Fake News for permission to use their videos. There will be a link to the YouTube channels for Very Fake News and for Patriot Wari Media in the description below. Please make sure you subscribe to their channel and watch their videos because they are very important. Also, thanks to anyone else whose videos I happen to use in my videos. As in the case of Eric Clanton, allegedly the bike lock attacker, the goal here is to prevent violent criminals from hurting more people in the future and for justice to be served through due process of law. We are talking about physical assault here, a serious crime. They could have killed Keith, and they may have killed Keith if it were not for Al Letson, the man in the red shirt here, the journalist, poet, etc. By the way, see the links in the video description below for Al Letson's websites. Commit such a crime, a crime against humanity like that, and you have no legitimate right to complain when you are brought to justice to face an impartial jury of your peers. This is not doxing. This is nothing like trying to get someone fired for wrong thing or for not being politically correct enough. This is nothing like like putting someone's name and face online, then calling them a Nazi, and then telling people to punch them. This is about preventing future attacks on other innocent people. If at this point anyone watching this wants to claim that what I call justice isn't real justice at all because fascism this and Nazi that, or whatever excuse you may have, I say this. Save it for the judge, okay? Save your propaganda-filled narrative. For the judge. Keith of Patriot Warrior Media, the man being beat down here, has reason to think that it was Yvette Falarka herself that made him a target. You see, before this attack on August 27th, he had been attending meetings that she and her comrades wanted to keep private, but which they had no legal right to do so. So she was in the same room as Keith. She sure got a good look at him. She probably looked at him with daggers in her eyes and etc. And I won't go into details as to why he thinks it was her, because, well, that would sort of uh, interfere with the investigation. Now, let's have a closer look at these people. I will color code all this for clarity. Each person will have their own color. So, in watching this, if you can help identify any of these people, please contact Keith at PatriotWarriorMedia at gmail.com. You can scroll down and see the link for that below, or cut and paste the email address, or if you want to type it out, it's PatriotWarriorMedia, P-A-T-R-I-O-T-W-A-R-R-I-O-R-M-E-D-I-A at gmail.com. Or you could send him a direct message on Twitter at KPicklefield, that's K P. I-K-K-L-E-F-I-E-L-D. Again, that's on Twitter. Also, the Berkeley Police Department is looking for information on these people as well. And it says in multiple sources that if you do have information for them on these people, to call their homicide unit at 510-981-4794 that you can see right there. All right, folks, now let's get into the details. I will slow down the video and freeze frame to point out identifying details of each attacker in hopes that we can spot them in other videos and photos, news articles, reverse image searching, social media, and so on. In the description, there are links to many videos of that day. Please look for more clues in those videos. And we could all compare notes and discuss this in the comments section. T in the description, below is a link to a WordPress with clues about these people, photos of these people, identifying markers of these people. I'll add to this as we go. If you give me more clues, I'll add more to the WordPress and we'll just build up a body of evidence. I don't know if any of you folks know 4chan, if you're familiar with 4chan. I've tried to navigate 4chan a few times and it's just sort of, uh, it's too time consuming and I'm too busy to do so. But these people obviously can help us. So if you could post this video in 4chan, try to get their attention and let's see if we can crowdsource this even further. That would be great. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Please share this video all over social media and you can upload it to your YouTube channel, your speak out or whatever. You don't have to ask permission. You can just mirror it on your channel. Please do so. But please include the link to the WordPress article that is in the description below. That's very crucial. Here's a helicopter view of Martin Luther King Jr. Civic Center Park in Berkeley, California, August 27, 2017. At this point in the video, in the midst of what looks like a swarm of violent insects in this area here, is this. Joey Gibson, Tiny, and others are being attacked here as they engage in non-violent resistance in return. Meanwhile, the police do nothing because, as they usually do in Berkeley, they abandon those who are being attacked by Antifa. The 
guy in the gray shirt will be chased down and hunted like an animal and beaten. Notice the ambiguously gendered person in the gray tank top. This person was involved in many attacks that day. Tiny and Joey are driven out of the park in the direction of this arrow. Here's another angle and right there is Tiny and Gibson. Here's another angle. There's Tiny and Joey running southwest on Austin. Switching angles again. There's that ambiguously gender person or whatever. The yellow disc is showing their route. They reach the police who are standing down the block. Watch closely, you could see one pig hand, a police hand, reaching out to point them away, to push them away, to block them. Then there's another hand to block them from escaping Antifa. Here's that ambiguously gendered person or whatever. But they pushed their way through the police line anyway, and they were arrested for doing so, by the way. But at least they escaped Antifa. So they are aware this yellow disc is here. Heath is right about here too. And then he heads in this direction to about here, where he is beat down in a cowardly fashion. Here is the Google Street View of the very spot where he is attacked with the pale yellow building that we could see in the background. So keep in mind there are a bunch of police standing just yards away from where Keith was attacked, and the police did nothing. They even refused to help him after the attack, but we'll get into that later. Here is video of the moment that Joey Gibson and Tiny are being arrested. On the other side of that wall of people is the wall of police and behind them is Joey and Tiny. Keith is in the same area as the person filming this video. The camera will turn and be pointed at Keith in a moment, but first look at this guy I'm indicating in hot pink. You can see that he has light and dark gray hair, long, tied back in a ponytail. You can see here from behind the knot of the red bandana he's wearing on his face. You can see that he's wearing a gray shirt, long sleeves, black backpack with a red square on it. Below that is a sticker for Refuse Fascism, the thing that says NO. That's their logo in a red sticker, white letters. You can see now that he's wearing blue jeans. You can see another bag slung over his shoulder with a slightly lighter and shinier material. There is Mike Wilson, a prominent BAMN member, not to be confused with Mark Erga. They do look similar, but they're not the same person. Both these guys do hang out with Yvette Falarca a lot. They can be seen with her very often. There's Keith in the white being chased. And right about here is where they first started to hit him. There in hot pink is the guy with the red bandana who called for him to be beat up right there. Okay, the man in this sort of olive green shirt, he's trying to jump in and save Keith along with Al Letson. There again in hot pink is the guy with the red bandana. He's bending over and he's doing something to Keith. He may be stealing his equipment or he may be trying to hurt him or something. 
Here's the same attack from a different angle, a little bit closer this time. Keith says that first his camera was knocked out of his hand, then he felt hands grab him, then he felt the flagpole hit him multiple times. There in hot pink again is the guy with the red bandana who called for him to be attacked. You can see there that he is wearing brown shoes, or sneakers. There's his hand marked out in hot pink. You can see his bag with the right cross on it there. Try to notice the details, folks. The color of his hair and the bag that he's wearing there. He's actually wearing two bags, a backpack and a bag over his shoulder. You can see the red cross right there. Here you can see that the guy who called the shots, the guy marking in hot pink, is pushing Al Letson aside. He's trying to elbow him aside, and gee, I wonder why. You can see his leg extended back behind him. See, there's his leg right there marked in hot pink. You can see him really trying to push Al Letson out of the way. He may be stealing something off of Keith's neck. He had a necklace and it was stolen. He may be stealing Keith's equipment, his phone, etc. You can see the ambiguously gendered person just picking him up like he's a rag doll. No concern for his health whatsoever. It's just, hey, let's get him on his feet so we don't get in too much trouble. Here's yet another angle of the same attack. There you can see the guy marked again in hot pink. There is Mike Wilson, a vet Flark's friend. There you can see the guy marked again in hot pink. You can see he's reaching down and he's picking something up. And you can see he's down there for quite a while. There's Hot Pink Guy standing back up again. You can see the sticker on his backpack, the Refuse Fascism sticker that says NO! Here's another look at him. Note the features of his backpack. There's Mike Wilson again. Here's Mike Wilson again. I think this is March 4th, if not April 15th. And a little bit to his right, you can see a vet Falarka's face partially covered by that hat. There's Mike Wilson on March 4th, right next to the bike lock attacker and his girlfriend. How nice. Mike Wilson again. Mike Wilson, Mike Wilson, Mike Wilson, Mike Wilson, Mike Wilson. Here's a very clear shot of that sticker right there. Let's look now at the person I'm going to call Green, that guy right there. It seems he's the first person to touch Keith. He reaches out, and there Green grabs him right about there. And that gives a chance to the other guys to hit him. With the flagpole, for example, right about there. Keith goes down. The guy in green is still grabbing him. There he is. Okay, so let's look. He's all in black. He's heavy set. Long black sleeves. Black thing around his face. Maybe a t-shirt. I'm not sure. Black hat. Black sunglasses. Light skin. Brown shoes. Little marking on his hand. I'm not sure if that's a tattoo or just something else, but note that. Hold on a second about the hand tattoo. The hand tattoo may indicate a gang, maybe MS-13, who knows? We know that Antifa has recruited local gang members, and looking at the body type and the body language of Keith's attackers, it seems to me that Green may be a gang member along with the guy that we'll be calling Red coming up, the guy that hits him with a flagpole. Some of you may remember my video titled Hungry for Supremacists, which features a video that was taken on the same day in the same location just a little bit outside of that area at a local gas station. Let's have a look again. We're hungry we got for Russ in there, huh? You got We're real hungry for supremacists, huh? We're not. And there's more of us. You guys are all racist mother yeah. Shut up, bro. So these guys don't seem like your typical white wimpy antifas either, but obviously they, like antifa that day, are hungry for people that they can, well, label white supremacists, Nazi fascists, heretics, witches, burn them, and attack, you know, so they may be gang members as well. Let's return to the attack video. Notice that the guy that I call green and the guy that I will call red will work together. Green sets up Keith by halting his motion by grabbing onto him and stopping him from moving forward, and then red comes in with the decisive below. So, are these guys gang members? Please look for further clues. Second camera angle here. 
Guy in green about to grab Keith in white. He grabs him right there. You can see he's really pulling back on Keith right there. Look at his posture. That means he's bending down. He's bending his knees. He's getting his butt down there. He's really pulling hard. Now let's look at the thief in beige. Here's Keith again. Pay close attention to what he's holding. That's his monopod with his camera. Now look at this guy in beige. He's not holding anything. He's in all black, dark sunglasses, brown shoes. Here's the guy in beige with what appears to be Keith's monopod. You can see it more clearly here. You can see it even more clearly here. Here we see him from behind and up close, and you can see that he has something olive colored in his back pocket, something made out of fabric, like a handkerchief or something, bandana maybe. Here you can see that he has black sunglasses and that his head covering hangs down loosely and folds on his chest. And here is the clearest view yet of Keith's stolen monopod. Keith said he had about six SD cards in his backpack, a lot of video that he recorded and never got to post, that's really a shame. They ripped off his scuba diver pendant that he got in Belize in Central America, I mentioned that earlier. They just ripped it off his neck. They smashed his shades, his sunglasses, and took a lot of camera equipment. So again, these are criminals. Not just violent criminals, but also thieves. Now let's look at Red. This guy right here. He's the first person to really hit Keith, as far as I can see. Okay, so the green guy grabs him. Here comes Red, swinging really hard, hits Keith. Keith goes down, comes in for another one. Note, by the way, that he has a white t-shirt underneath that black. He hits him again. Again, 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 probably hits him again off camera. And there he is. You can see that he has a black jacket. It's slightly shiny, I guess about a satin sheen. You can see it's hooded. He has somewhat olive skin. He's wearing one of those winter hat mask things that cover everything except the eyes. Here's another angle. And there you can see a clear shot of him hitting Keith. Keith is trying to get up, but then he's being beaten down right there. He goes in for another hit. And notice that he has some sort of light-colored patch or label or something on the side knee of his left pant leg there. Now let's look at Yellow, right there. This is a female. She seems to be kicking Keith right there. You can see here that she has a blue bandana with white markings. She comes back in for another kick right about here. Okay, there she is again. Look at her shoes. You can see her pants are like these skin-tight things. Her shoes seem to be sort of uh, grayish, greenish maybe? Okay, closely look. You can see her hat says dad. You can't see it here, but there is a period after the word dad. You can see her about to stomp on Keith right there. How nice of her. I'm sure she's fighting for freedom. She's a freedom fighter. <laughs> there she is kicking or stomping again. You can see that she has a white drawstring. Something white around where her left pocket, left front pocket should be. I'm not sure if that's the inside of the pocket or whatever. Second camera angle. There she is. She's kicking Keith there. Another camera angle. There she is. How brave it is to be part of a gang gang stopping somebody. Ooh, you must be brave. Okay, now, look at this right here. There she is. See her face right there? Now keep in mind, let me remind you, the Berkeley police are looking for these people. There will be a link for this article in the description below, by the way. Notice that she has dark eyebrows, even though she has blonde hair. Notice also that she has a lighter colored thing on underneath the black. It might be actually a light inner lining for the black jacket that she's wearing. Not sure if that is white or light gray, perhaps. You can see that it says Berkeley. Berkeley police today released photographs of a woman who they believe was involved in fights at a No to Marxism rally at Martin Luther King Jr. Civic Center Park on August 27th. The Berkeley police said the photographs they released today are a follow-up to photos they released last Thursday. Those photographs, they said, depicted, quote, suspects who were wanted in connection with felonious assaults, unquote, that was allegedly occurred at the rally which was organized by conservative activist Amber Cummings, who is known as Base Trainee. Police said several people who attended the rally were punched, kicked and struck with improvised weapons, yes, while the police refused to help them. 
Berkeley police said the photographs released today show the female suspect without her mask, so they are again asking people with information about the suspect's identities or crimes to call their homicide unit at area code 510-981-4794. Police arrested 13 people on August 27th at the No to Marxism rally at Civic Center Park and at a separate demonstration called Rally Against Hate that took place a few blocks away at Oxford and Addison Streets on the West Crescent Lawn of the University of California at Berkeley. Large crowds were present at both rallies. Berkeley police said, quote, We remain focused on taking enforcement action when practical and appropriate before and during and after the events, unquote. We've watched videos of you watching people get beat up and doing nothing. You, you are following orders? Well, you don't follow bad orders. That's the Nuremberg defense, by the way. The Nazis said, oh, we were just following orders when we killed those millions of people. No, that is not an excuse. Now look closely at her ears. They look kind of funny. That is because she has piercings in her earlobes that are long and stretched out and she's taken those and kind of tucked them up and over and behind her ears. Okay, look right there. You can see the weird thing going on with her ear there. There's a close look at her face right there. Here's another look at her face. And another. And there you go. Okay, now let's look at the person I'm going to call Pink. Pink is coming in for a cheap shot. You can see he's wearing black jeans, sort of a shiny, thin black coat. He has dark hair, dark sunglasses, bandana around the lower part of his face. His jacket has a hood. You can see that his bandana has some white markings, white design on it. Pink looks to me a little bit like, or a lot like, Luis E. Marquez, if I'm saying that right. That's this guy right here. Could it be him? Marquez is a familiar face in the Portland Antifa crowd. Here he is with high-profile activist Gregory Robert McKelvey and his girlfriend. I wonder if that's him. I mean, according to this arrest records, he's 5'6", about 44 years old, or maybe by now 45 years old, because this is from 2017. And he's about 140 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. If you could see him, if you see his face spotted in any videos of this day, please let me know in the comments section below. Thank you very much. There is Purple. Purple is about to kick Keith, and there she goes. I'm pretty sure that's a female. You can see that she's wearing all black, dark shoes, fanny pack. You can see that her clothing there shows some of her skin on her shoulder. I'm not sure if that's a bra strap or whatever there. She's wearing dark sunglasses. Her face is partially covered. There she is, closer up, right there. You can see that she has dark hair. Second camera angle. There she is. There she is. Now let's look at the person I'm calling Brown right there. You can see that he's wearing dark clothes, dark sneakers with that Nike swish and white. Sort of a greenish hat, I guess. Here he is from behind, you can see that he's wearing a sort of camouflage hat in brown and light brown, and then you can see the bandana from behind, it does have some sort of Japanese logo on it, like a bonsai thing or something maybe. Okay, now the camera's turning to face him, his hat's coming off, and there you can see the bonsai symbol, you can see here that he has a white shirt underneath the dark one. Okay, now there's orange, shiny, black helmet. You can see he's wearing black gloves, he's carrying the shield, he has a black shirt, maybe it's inside out because it looks like there's a white label in the back, if not, I don't know what that is. Okay, so there's orange holding the shield. By the way, that photographer right there who's watching instead of helping, the one circled in white, probably took this photograph right here. Second camera angle. 
There's Orange stopping Keith. You can see, by the way, he has a black backpack, light skin. Another angle. There's Orange. There he is. There again. You can see that he has dark shoes, maybe black or maybe gray. Okay, there marked out in light blue is a guy who has sort of that garbage can shield thing. Looks like it was cut out of a black plastic or black rubber garbage can. There's the tip of his shield right there. And there he is pummeling Keith with a volley of punches. You can see that his shield thing there has the iron arrow symbol, the arrows in white circle and red on top of a black shield thing. And there he is beating up Keith. You can see that he has a red and black backpack. He has goggles on, black covering on his face and head. Thankfully, Al Letson pushes him out of the way right there. Okay, there you can see that he has white shin guards on and there's some sort of white thing hanging down from a white cord. I don't know if that's a cell phone or whatever that is, but watch it swinging around. And here you can see that he's wearing dark shoes. There he is. You can see his shoes are kind of gray and black. Second camera angle, you could see clearly he stomps Keith. There he is again. You could see Al Letson pushing him out of the way. Living in the moment, Al Letson said that he just, he didn't have any choice, he just acted. Okay, he jumped in as a good Samaritan, knowing that he could be fired for it or beat up. He said he was sure he was going to be pounded down just like Keith, but he jumped in anyway. He said he just could not watch this happen in front of him without trying to help. Now, that's a person living in the moment. That's somebody who realizes that there is more than just your own individuality. That we are all, in some sense, connected. Al Letson, wherever you are, thank you for doing what you did. There he is again, light blue. There he is. Okay, now this guy here in the lime green, the guy who has a skateboard in his backpack, he seems to be one of the higher ups. He seems to be like the ambiguously gendered person involved in almost any attack that day. So you can see here he has a black t-shirt on, a black hat, I think it says wolves. He has sort of blondish hair, a darker red bandana with white design, black sunglasses, sort of a dark gray denim vest with band logos or band patches on that. We'll have a better look at that in a moment. Here's another photo of that same guy. You can see him a lot better here. And this is the moment where they were attacking that father and son team that you saw earlier in this video. So like I said, he seems to be overseeing just about all the major attacks that day. Here's another shot of him. Here he is at some other time and place. You can sort of see his face there. You can see his patches. There circled in lime green is a minor threat patch. Patch for the band Minor Threat, which shows the singer Ian McKay with a bald head. There you can see a Bad Religion patch, the band Bad Religion. There's a patch for the band The Descendant. Now we're going to back up again before Keith was attacked. There's Keith in white and Al Letson in white. Okay, here is the ambiguously gendered person in the baby poop green. There he she is. There he she is again. Take note of what it's wearing. A gray tank top with two darker stripes and some sort of buttons around the shoulder area. A face covering thing that is around its neck. Tinted sunglasses, dark hair pulled back. It's a little bit long. Sort of light black or faded black or maybe dark gray denim. Not sure if that's a skirt or shorts or whatever. With a little flap that would be covering the front just sort of hanging down. Not sure if those are man boobies or what's going on there. By the way, this of course is not to disparage transgender people. I'm not making fun of this person. I'm just trying to identify this person. You can see a tattoo on the front torso, the stomach area. Now look at the body language of the 
ambiguously gendered person sort of hopping up and down. That's what boxers do. That's what you do when you're about to hit somebody. That is fight or flight right there. I'm saying this because after Keith was attacked, this person would claim to Keith, how does it feel to have a transgender person save your life? Well, that's not what happened. This person was intent on hitting Keith. Okay? Not saving Keith. And this is consistent with this person's action throughout the day. This person was involved in many attacks. Okay, now look in the dark purple. This person right here. A black helmet, which is not shiny with stickers on it with the reggae colors, red, green, and gold. White framed sunglasses. Sort of, uh, I guess, olive, a coffee colored skin maybe. Dark hair. And that's this person right here. Look at all the identifying markers. Look at the skin color, the hair. Sort of frizzyish, curlyish hair. Quite young looking. And here's another photo of the same person. You can see that he's wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt, black backpack, carrying that sort of pinkish sign that ironically says no hate, which people were using as weapons of hatred. Here we see a video of a meeting at UC Berkeley for Refuse Fascism, the communist group, on May 4th, 2017. Look at the guy with the black t-shirt with the white word no on it, with the black hat, sort of darkish skin, standing against the wall. It may be dark purple. Let's have a close look at him. Unfortunately, we lose resolution as we get closer to him. So, could this be Dark Purple? Keith says that he met and spoke with Dark Purple on July 15th, 2017 at the Impeach Trump March in San Francisco. He approached Keith and apologizing for his side's animosity towards Keith and his colleagues, he gained Keith's trust by taking off his mask, claiming to be against violence in the protests, and etc. Now, because he pretended to be a reasonable person, Keith thought that, well, Dark Purple was a reasonable person and that he could be swayed with reason. So Keith asked him if he would do an interview via Skype or something sometime and Keith showed Dark Purple his YouTube channel on his phone. Keith says, quote, we talked then and at several events following that. We talked on August 26th too and he said he still wanted to talk and do the interview. He was the only person who knew my social media was connected to me. He was the only person who knew what my YouTube channel was. Now it seems that Dark Purple gave that information to Rafael Kadaris of Refuse Fascism who was there that day and who knew Keith. Keith says that then, quote, the info was likely passed around to Yvette Florica who I have interacted with a lot. They believed I was doxing them, not documenting them, but trying to dox them, and said as much in tweets and etc. They were pissed that I passed myself off as one of them for months, and they never knew until then. The worst thing you could do to Antifa who are committing crimes anonymously is to call them out publicly. I never did, but that is what they all believed. My attack was a very coordinated one, not opportunistic. On Saturday in San Francisco, the day before I was attacked, I was surrounded by four to 5,000 communists and Antifa when the owner of Revolution Bookstore recognized recognized me and called me out. They got on the bullhorn and told everyone I was a fascist and Nazi, etc. I split from the group and a member of Antifa followed me out, then broke off and returned to the march. They could have got me then, but they already had a plan in place because they knew I would be in Berkeley the next day. I put it on Twitter and Periscope that I would do the event even though it was cancelled. So they waited until they had me in the perfect place and all the players were ready in Berkeley and attacked me." Unquote. Keith also says that before he was attacked on that day, August 27th, he was being tracked by spotters. Now, they were two females who seemed to have been following him around and relaying information to other people. He did have images of these people who were spotting him. Unfortunately, that information was stolen from him. Right after the attack, they stole his equipment, smashed it up, etc. Okay, now let's move on. Here's another angle. You could see he has that sticker from Refuse Fascism that says no on it. You could see he has a camera on the front of his helmet. There's the ambiguously gender person in baby poop green yanking Keith up, and that's not what you should do with an injured person. You just don't do that. There in beige is the guy that stole his monopod, that guy right there. And there in purple, not to be confused with dark purple, is that guy. You can see that he has a black sort of bag or with a cinch sack at the top, kind of backpack looking thing with a red sticker right there. You can see him reaching down to grab something and there he is. He's grabbing Keith's backpack. Okay, and you can see the guy's wearing all black with dark shoes, maybe greenish or grayish shoes. Let's go back just a moment. Here you can see his skin tone, you can see his hair, it's dark and it's pulled back in a ponytail and you can see that around his neck is something white with a dark color, maybe a black part, maybe that's part of the pattern or something like that. So take note of that please. Now you remember the transgender person or the ambiguously gender person, the person I marked down in baby poop green, the one that's involved in lots of attacks. I mean, take a look, there it is. Mm-hmm. 
there it is. There it is again. All over the place. Anyway, Keith said that after he was beat up and he came to, and he was sort of stumbling down the block, that ambiguously gender person ran up, shoved her phone in his face, probably taking video, and asked what is it like to have, or how does it feel like to have a trans woman save his life? And Keith would, was kind of like, I don't know. And as we saw in the video, she did no such thing, or he or whatever did no such thing. Anyway, Keith said thanks and just stumbled on. Keith also said, quote, then as I was trying to get away, still being followed, the two cop cars came towards me driving slowly on Grants. A guy ran up to the lead car, stopped them, and he said, this guy needs an ambulance, pointing towards me. He just got his ass kicked by Antifa. They ignored him and slowly drove on. So I had to go another block or so with Antifa following and making threats before I got to my truck. Of course, they saw what I drive and I couldn't lose them. I would have completely collapsed if I had to go much further before getting into my vehicle. By the way, I think the guy who tried to get the cops to call the ambulance was the older guy in the green shirt waving his hat and trying to get people to stop attacking, unquote. So whoever you are, if that was you, well, thank you. And at any rate, thank you for jumping in during the fight to try to stop it. That was, that was awesome of you. You know, they could have got you too. So, you know, you deserve credit for that, whoever you are, hat waving guy in the green shirt. Listen to this guy, the guy that called for Keith to be attacked, telling his people to smash Keith's equipment. That motherfucker has been filming my people all day, he'll say. Listen. Destroy that fucking equipment. There you go. Here is Yellow again participating in the destruction of equipment. I don't know if it's Keith stuff because this is a little bit further away from where he was attacked. This is closer to the park, but anyway, it is someone's stuff and this further establishes her guilt. Let's take another look at this helicopter footage that we saw earlier of this guy being attacked by the ambiguously gendered person because I found video from the ground and wouldn't you know it, there's Yellow 2 hitting the victim with what appears to be Keith's monopod. Let's see that again. And watch this guy right here grab the monopod from Yellow. Let's see that again from above. There they are and snag. Good for him. He jumps in to save the victim. Now that's Valor. Good for him and I hope both of those guys are okay. Anyway, this further establishes Yellow's guilt. Remember, the homicide unit wants these people. So see the number below in the video description and click that link to that WordPress for more info. Just a reminder folks, please share this all over social media and you can upload this to your channel. You don't have to ask, just go ahead and mirror it. No permission is needed, but please include the link to the WordPress article. Thank you very much everyone. Peace, love, freedom, and equality.